Welcome to The Craft of Writing for Standard English. I'm about to give you a few good ideas for looking at one of the many prescribed texts, Dreamers by Melissa Lukashenko, a really evocative short story that combines historical fiction with some insights um, about relationships between white Australians and Aboriginal Australians. And what is so beautiful and so vivid about this short story is the powerful sense of the landscape that it conveys. Although it might be tempting to get swept away by our enjoyment of the themes or of some of the images in this short story, it's important to note that as part of a craft of writing approach, our job is to look for ideas that our students can use as inspiration for their own crafting. So here's a couple of brief thoughts about how you can do this within standard English. Firstly, as I've said, the setting is incredible. So you, uh, in your reading as a class, might consider the role that the landscape plays throughout the story is a place that's beautiful and a place that's perilous. And Lukashenko loses, uses the trope of the lost child within the Australian bush to enormous effect. So you're looking at the descriptions, you're thinking about how language is being used, and then you're pulling out some of these ideas and encouraging students to also create a setting that is both beautiful and perilous. You're deciding on that setting. You may choose to give the class uh, only the one setting or you may choose to together brainstorm some options. You're thinking about some positive and negative adjectives that could be used in a descriptive way to explore setting. They're writing groups of words describing this landscape and then writing a paragraph on the setting thinking about evoking a particular atmosphere through the powerful use of language, including adjectives. You might use the story as a model for writing, not just imaginative writing, but all different styles. There's a trail within the story that the innocent child Eric leaves behind him. And so we go from thinking, how do we respond to this as readers? How do we appreciate this lovely piece of writing? To thinking about, okay, all stories belong to a literary tradition. You might think about some fairy stories of lost children, such as Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel lay a trail that gets lost. And students may want to think about writing discursively, combining reflective writing, our own knowledge and understanding, our own appreciation and a personal tone with how fairy stories and how tropes still offer us a message, still offer us ideas, still offer us something to think about. The context of Lukashenko's short story is interesting. There's many references to real events. There's the war in Korea. There's protesters and conflict in New Guinea. And this really does add a sense of authenticity to the narrative. Students can think about their own piece of historical writing. How can you write a narrative that references a real historical event? I mean, one example, one recent example is COVID. How is it that writing an historical story enables us to link personal and political ideas within writing. We are all living through a time in history and how is this part of our own interesting narrative? I'd also um, like to think a little bit about imitation writing. It's something that certainly you'll have done with your class in Reading to Write um, and students can, as a class, do small parts of imitation writing and thinking about evoking a sense of setting that's real through imitation writing. This example's from the story. What was real was endless green paddocks, stretching to where the scrub began. And after that, the ridge of the border range, soaring to cleave the western sky. The hundred-year-old ghost gums along the creek, the lowing of the cows at dawn, these things were real. Now, how is it that students can create something that's also real, shift our sense of the real, shift our ideas about stories and storytelling through replacing some elements of the story. Now, the resources that we give on the craft of writing, particularly for standard, have a number of interesting examples of imitation writing that can give students ideas on what they can do with small pieces of writing from the prescribed text. Here's where we shift the setting and look at another place that was real. What was real? Was the mammoth buildings blocking out the cloudy sky, expanding up to the heavens? And after that, the flashing lights in the city sparkling brighter than the night sky. The 10-year-old tram line whizzing relentlessly, the rushing of the workers in the evening. These things were real. I hope that 
This really brief example of one prescribed text has given you a bit of a taste of the kinds of things you can expect in a craft of writing resource. All the ETA's craft of writing resources are written by teachers and that's why the emphasis is on practical things that you can do in the classroom. There's a workbook for standard, one for advanced, and there's also a resource that stretches across standard and advanced courses. I hope you have fun teaching module C, the craft of writing, because it really is a wonderful module that encourages such a different approach to teaching.